So welcome to another IT talk slash sales video. Um, and this is gonna be along the business line because people ask this question a lot. And me and Brett, we were talking about this and he's actually done a lot of talks about getting to yes. Yeah. And sales objections is what this is kind of about. And the one of the problems a lot of people have just in general in IT is you, you pitch your um, idea to someone and you know you get that uh, thrown right back at you. Mm -hmm. You're too expensive. It's too much. I can't uh, afford you or things like that. And there's a there's a hard to figure out balance because humans are difficult and complicated, much more complicated than uh, computers. That's why I like yep. technology better <laughs> sometimes. They sometimes don't talk back, right? Yeah. Well, then they do. They give you output back and it's based on input. It's easy to <laughs> solve. Um, so... One of, the, one of the things I do when I'm pitching, because uh, we do have proposals mm -hmm. and we're pitching them to there, and I have people who want to just beat me up on price. And you just kind of got to hold hold to the grindstone on that. I mean, there's it, figuring out your pricing, I'm going to do some videos on that, but that's really, really difficult. And mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's a, a different type of science. But once you have established your prices and know what you're going to pitch to your clients, the first objection a lot of times is, whoa, that backup server. Yeah, do I really need it? And you kind of have to step out of the tech mind uh, a lot. And that's one of the reasons I have Brett here, because he's kind of more the business-oriented guy who's less tech. And that actually helps a lot, because a lot of people want to jump right into the tech side of it all the time. Like, this thing has this many processors and this much memory, and you start breaking down technical details. And business owners are like, uh, yeah, the guy who sold me all my trucks, he gave me a lot of technical details I didn't care about. I need him to haul freight. Um, Right. Tell me how it's going to value hauling freight and the reliability of this thing. So you got to think about from their perspective. They're dealing with, and I, I bring up trucking because we have a lot of transportation clients. Um, they're dealing with so many different elements of the business as a president of the company, uh, business owners. Um, you are just throwing more technical details out about them that it's not that they don't mm -hmm. care. It's they have other things. They're focused on how do they get the next thing that makes their business go and how do you fit into it. Right. So the first thing you have to do is make your pitch make sense to them, uh, be a value proposition of how it will integrate into their business. And that's the first step to them understanding it. Because we, as Brett said there, people are natural about saying. Well, just people are natural about saying no. Right. Um, from infancy, if you think about the what your parents told you every time, when you went to reach for something, when you were young, you were told no. And that was one of the first commands we learned as humans was no. You walk into a Home Depot or a Lowe's or a Walmart and there's somebody there greeting you and they ask you, can we help you with anything? What do you say? Oh no, I'm okay. And then you take a few steps and, oh wait a minute, where do I find the, the two by fours? Or where do I find this? So we, our first inclination is to say no to somebody before we say yes. One of the things I've, I've you, you mentioned it too, is you get those business owners that get that glossed over look. Right. It's happened to me because they don't understand. And people say no because first, it's inherent. Second is, they're not understanding your solution. Right, so you have to make sure that your pitch is all about integrating into their business, mm -hmm. how it's gonna do there. And backups are one of those things that it's a great place to start. It's a really important uh, to the client, but it's also can be difficult to convey that. Now the customers um, that have experienced a major outage, and I'll, I'll take an engineering yeah. company that we have, um, they understand the value and they had no problems approving backups because mm -hmm. the reason they switched to us from IT was because they had a service failure from the other tech company and that service failure led them to being down for five days. Oh. They have, I think, seven CAD engineers that all make roughly a hundred plus thousand dollars a year mm. who had nothing to do for the next five days. Not to mention what we refer to as brand erosion. And what that is, is the perception people have about your company when you couldn't service the projects that you've done. So they couldn't get their engineering projects delivered um, on time. Right. They had a bunch of guys that they are on salary that they had to pay with nothing to do because the server was broken mm -hmm. and didn't have it, uh, hadn't have proper backups and they stuck everything in the cloud and took forever to get it back. There's a, it was a whole mess. So we have a solution that's more robust but this is how it was sold to them. We have different options based on how much downtime you wanna have. And they're like, what do you mean by downtime? Well, we can back everything up to the cloud. You have this much data, it will take you about three days to get all that data back out of the cloud. Oh, so you'll mm -hmm. be down for three days, but we can restore your data. Or we can sell you this second server to replicate everything so your downtime is like almost eliminated because we can do failover. 
oh, so we can have two servers essentially, yes. And I, if I would have came in, let me pitch you on these two servers and high availability options right. and things like that, you would start talking about things that go over their head versus the value proposition of, we can have it so you'll have these people down. And then you can tell them, but you don't have to ask the number. How much does it cost your company to be down for two days? What would it cost? And there's... It, it, well, you're, 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 the, the main point you're saying is you've got to, you've got to sell to the pain. Yeah. Of your customer. And there's a pain there. If they're you five days being down, yeah. that's a lot of money. This company had everything set up wrong. It took them forever to get all the data back, and they still didn't get it all back. That's a whole other, uh, one of those crazy, messy stories. And some yep. of our best clients are ones like that. So, you know, we have clients that really didn't take cybersecurity seriously. Hmm. Well, once they, uh, if they work in a compliance and they have personal information and they work in a compliance uh, controlled industry, being that HIPAA, Sarbanes Oxley, any of those where they have um, personal information, either financials, or medical records, you have a client that may not take things serious until, until something they've been hit. Any client that's been hit is so much easier to sell to. Um, and it's hard to sell to that pain because they just don't understand it and they think you're just trying to you know, scare and shock them. But there's a lot of statistics you can throw out there. I mean, a lot of these companies don't survive. Here's the fines mm -hmm. you pay. Yeah, that $200,000 fine is expensive for a small business and a Marriott breach to happen the other day. They're like, yeah, that's just yeah. a marketing expense because we're going to hire a PR firm. <laughs> um, that's probably going to they're probably going to spend more on PR than they will in fines. Yep. <laughs> uh, so you got to once again sell to the pain, and that's how you get around those sales objections: is making sure you understand how it would impact their business, not how whiz bang amazing and how many processors are in that. Well, one of the things in selling to the pain, if somebody hasn't experienced that, the one thing you can do is paint the picture. Yeah. You talk about a story about a client that you've had to experience something of down, like your that five day downtime. Right. What was what what was their loss? And you talk about that, and get 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 that business owner or that person you're working with to understand that I don't want that to happen to me. I need your solution. Right. And and it's little things like that that you're you want to make sure you've made a clear picture, mm -hmm. a clear path. You don't want to just sell it on fear. And in, yeah. in some ways, you are a little bit selling it on fear, but it's really not the goal. And I hate when you have too much fear marketing um, out there. The big, bad cybersecurity guys are going to take it over unless you use our service. you got to kind of talk about the risks in our industries, mm -hmm. the targets that they are. And some of the reality, you know, besides we've seen these large companies hack, but more often than not, these large companies have done a good job on security. Uh, at least a handful of them are. Cause as much as we do hear about it, there was a lot we're not hearing about when you look yeah. at the size of the market. Um, and small businesses are easy pickings for cybersecurity uh, targets because they generally don't have, they've spent the minimum um, on any type of security, any type of monitoring. So it, they're just kind of swinging mm -hmm. in the breeze because they had their friend who set up their IT for them and stuff like that. And when I say don't, you have to project the pain to them and paint the picture and ask them the numbers I always start with, you know, think about how much it costs you. You don't have to tell me the amount. I add that in there because sometimes they think I'm trying to get personal financial information. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, no, no. I don't want to know how much your company makes. But you need to think about as a business owner, what does downtime cost you? What if this server goes down and it's down for mm -hmm. several days? How much does that cost you? <clears throat> and that's when you have to really work through it with them. And it, it, it's it's not hard right. to do. you got to look at it in their perspective. I'll also tell you it's handy to understand their markets uh, and be able to make uh, comparative analogies. It, it oh, that's a, that's yeah. a great thing. Yeah. Uh, transportation, they know a lot about the trucks. So mm -hmm. if you make the comparison of why did you go with Freightliner trucks or why did you go with that, and it doesn't take much reading uh, to understand what that business is. Or you look at the CAD designers. Hey, look, I, you, I looked up the tools some of the CAD people used. Oh, did you? Yeah. And did, yeah. yeah, and you can just talk to them about it. Like, I know you went and bought this device or you went mm -hmm. with this CAD software because it's quality software or you went with these high-end um, printers because you know this plotter does better. Right. Whatever those are, you can kind of make those uh, comparative analogies so you understand their industry. You also uh, develop some rapport because the technology side, they know technology like they mm -hmm. need to use us. They don't know. Uh, they're surprised when you, right. oh yeah, you have such and such printer. <laughs> oh, I just Googled it. Yeah, I just <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being not genuine, but you understand their industry a little right. better and you can, you can then understand their perspective on things. Also, if they are really cheap and they have crap everywhere and they're a mess, they're probably also a client that's just going to be a problem. Just walk away. <laughs> yeah, but you've cleaned up messes before. I've cleaned up messes before. We, we, there's something you can just tell about a client. We've seen clients with just scattered papers everywhere mm -hmm. in garbage. Or they, there are also clients who probably are just looking for the cheapest. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's telltale signs when no is fine. No is probably the answer you want. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> 
Yeah, absolutely. So that was it. That's a short video on this topic um, because people ask me about how to deal with sales objections. Mm -hmm. Your sales objections, a lot of times, like I said, they come from you being overly technical and less selling to the uh, pain that you're going right. to solve and understanding their business. So take the time to understand their business as your takeaway. Uh, sell to the pain. Don't get overly technical because I know some of my staff, and this is why I do sales, some of the techies that I employ, they really want to talk about processors. Right. They really want to talk about, you wouldn't believe what the CPU mark score is on this, and it's really... Brett's going, no, no. no that's, that's, that's not what's exciting that business. The, the, the bottom line is what's exciting that business owner. And if you can if you can get to that in, 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 a, in a simplistic form. Keep it simple, stupid, the KISS method. Yeah, KISS method. It actually works. It's, you yeah. know it's 2018. You still got to keep some simplicity, uh, simplicity and when you do these sales. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.